So as you guys know, we have lots and lots of area to mow here and to be honest, I'm struggling to keep up with it now that spring has gone absolutely crazy and we keep getting rain. <laughs> so today I'm going to put some growth regulator down, some Primo on this area. So I've got a new sprayer, so I'm going to show you guys that sprayer. We're going to calibrate it and then put some Primo out on this lawn to slow the growth down so I can keep up with it. Let's do it. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. So, this spray here is the King Chrome one. Um, shout out to those guys for sending me this to try out. I've had a few guys comment they wanted me to try a sprayer like this on this property, so why not give it a go? So first thing we've got to do is calibrate this, is because I've never used it before. So I fill it up with some water, mark out an area and calibrate it. I only put it together like two or three days ago, so I don't even actually have these nozzles spraying everything. Who knows, we might need to change the nozzles out. Um, but we'll use what we've got today just to see how it runs. Um, I've got a feeling though these nozzles might just drip once you flick it off. That's just my inkling because of the way they are. I wonder if they'll, they're probably a bit more coarse as well because they're so high up, otherwise you get heaps of spray drift. Um, today is dead still, there's like no wind about, so pretty much perfect day to spray. Um, but let's just flick it on and see how it goes. Yeah, it's a bit of drift. Not a lot though. <sighs> Schnitty. <laughs> see, look at this, I reckon. Look at that. That's gonna drip. Yep, that's dripping. Oh, yeah. That's probably, that is not ideal. That's fine, that'll work for today. Um, but yeah, I reckon I'll change those nozzles out in the long term just because they do drip a little bit and there is a little bit of spray drift even if I got some sort of barrier hanging over the back here. Just because if you're applying herbicides and stuff like that um, with something like this and it sprays out and hits some of your plants that don't like herbicides, not ideal. Although it's at a good height from the ground so it's not too bad. It's going to be pretty similar to your general nap sack sprayer anyway. It's just, this is just cranking it a bit more. So we're going to calibrate it. If we put 15 litres in here, that's what I filled it up to. Um, we're going to do 100 square metres, see how much we use, and then tip the rest out into a jug, and measure how much is left, and that's how we're going to calibrate it. So, let's do it! Alright, so let's measure out 100 square metres on this area just here. Um, just with some bricks and then we'll basically set a speed on this mower here because actually put it in cruise control with just a button um, and just I'll always have it on low revs just so I know exactly where it's at when I'm spraying it makes it nice and easy um, and that's how we're going to calibrate it so let's just measure out 100 square meters quickly Right, so as you can see, we've got our 100 square meters marked out. Brick, 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 brick. So 10 by 10 meters, which is 100 square meters. So now what we're gonna do is set this thing in cruise control, which is the button just here. You're gonna push your foot down and push that button in there. And it will keep it at a consistent speed, which is what we want for spraying. It's gonna be awesome. Um, and obviously you just see how it goes. Now. The, the wind has picked up a slight bit, but it's only supposed to be at the top 20 kilometers an hour today, which is borderline pushing it for spraying. Um, that's a gust though, so we're more sitting around 10, de 10 degrees, 10 kilometers for no gusts, with no gusts. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's spray this and let's see how much liquid we get out of it. Half a litre, 
one liter six so we basically use four liters per 100 square meters which is i actually love that because when i'm doing it with the knapsack sprayer that's exactly what i use per 100 square meters so all i have to do is put my foot flat on the ground with that lawn tractor the x380 set in that cruise control and we'll have perfect spray calibration so i'm going to know that every 100 square meters that i do i put out four liters of water that's obviously if i don't if i don't overlap um, and I make sure I keep that ground speed as well. We're going to get pretty good coverage. Right, so this is our Primo Max just here. So this is a plant growth regulator. So the active in this is Trinexapec ethyl. I think that's how you um, pronounce it. But it's basically going to slow down the growth of our turf grass so that we don't have to be regularly mowing these areas all the time so it depends on what grass type you have what application rate you need to use so if you look at the label um, it's going to tell you what the application rates are so for example if you are doing something like common cooch zoysia um, areas like that you're going to be looking at the rate of 20 to 40 mil per 100 square meters now that's going to be the same for kai Kuyu. so i've got well kai Kuyu is actually 16 to 60 mil per 100 square meters. So we're gonna go up at a higher rate, just because we've got so much kai in that area down there. Um, it probably will yellow it off a little bit when you always do your first application on warm season grass with a plant growth regulator. It can yellow it off a slight bit. Don't be too stressed about it if it does though. You can amend that by putting some liquid iron or something like that with it. Um, we're just gonna be putting down <laughs> just this today you know we're going to go half rate let's go 30 mil per 100 square meters just to be safe and then i can bump it up over time just so i don't stress it out too much now you want to make sure when you're applying this stuff as well don't apply it straight after a mow because it can actually make your grass go a bit of a gray sort of a color um, so you give yourself at least six hours if it was me i just wait till the next day and don't mow after you've actually applied the product either for at least six hours as well um, but again, I'd wait 24 hours just to be safe. Um, so we're gonna put it out on this lawn as I said. So this is a mix of everything, but as I said, the dominant grass in here is Kaikuyu grass. So we're gonna go for the Kaikuyu grass rate, which I said we're gonna half it. So we're gonna go 30 mil per 100 square meters on that. We could go even lower and it still would suppress it, um, but we're just gonna bump it up a little bit because I wanna give this some good suppression through here because I'm just struggling with keeping up with mowing. And I'd love to keep it nice and tidy. So Primo is some pretty interesting stuff. Um, it does help a lot um, with, as I said, slowing down your growth. But there's a couple other key features of it as well, which I thought I'd mention, because we used to use it on the golf course on the greens to sort of help suppress um, power annua or winter grass to a bit, or at least the seed head. Um, and it would also suppress the winter grass from growing a lot more and allow the bent to sort of creep and grow into areas a little bit. Now, it's never gonna get rid of it, but it is gonna help suppress it, which is great for play on golf greens and stuff like that. But also if you look on Syngenta's website um, and look at the label and you also look at some of the info they've got on there, it says it does help with denser roots. This is what it says on the information um, once you start applying it regularly. So more dense roots and deeper roots as well from what it says here. They've got a few graphs that show you how that all works. I'll flick it up on the screen because um, I'm not to be able to explain it. But it's supposed to also help with heat tolerance um, because of those stronger roots. Um, obviously wear tolerance as well wear and tear from people walking on it your kids playing on it, your pets playing on it um, and it's also going to help with disease resistance and pest resistance or tolerance as it says here the reason it says that is basically because you're getting denser and healthier plant so it's just going to help your plant be protected to an extent it's not an insecticide so it's not going to prevent things like um black bee or anything like that but it is going to help in the aid of having a stronger plant and but yeah jump on their website have a look at all the info make sure you guys always read the label i can't stress that enough and make sure you wear the proper ppe the recommended use rates are designed to give approximately 20 to 50 percent reduction in clippings over a two to six week period so it's going to depend on your temperatures so the hotter it is the quicker this product will break down so that when it comes it comes into using like a pgr calculator or something like that which you can actually do with the lawn journal app which i'll show you guys towards the end of the video um, but yeah it also depends on your application rates how much water you're getting a lot of environmental environmental factors come into it um, as i said it does help with its power annual management um, 
and a couple of other things as well like it's great to use before overseeding because it'll give your seed a chance to come up quicker and yeah <laughs> that's that's about it um, check the label though because you can also mix it with quite a few different products as well which is very very handy if you want to get it out with some other applications like liquid fertilizers fungicides I'll just quickly read to re-entry period so do not enter treated areas without protective clothing until spray is dried same with your pets and stuff like that as well wait till the area has dried out before you let them back on there no personal respiratory protective equipment normally required there you go so we won't need to wear a mask which is nice because it's gonna be flipping hot wear protective gloves while you're using it um, make sure you're wearing goggles or glasses long pants long sleeves just in case it's going to spray on you when you can also wash them as well after that so yeah looks like we're going to be pretty sweet beautiful that is all done so I'll tell you what I put about four extra liters in there um, and we believe it or not had four liters left over at the end so it definitely was pretty much exactly 80 liters over the whole area so with extra four liters I just ran up the side which I didn't include into my calculation which is fine just means we've got an extra hundred square meters in there so I just wanted to make sure that you know I just didn't calibrate it slightly wrong but it's pretty much bang on so I know for this area 80 liters and it's pretty much perfect which is ideal now again don't let people into this area until it's dried out won't take long today because it's so sunny which is nice a bit of a change in the weather um, but I'll make sure I triple rinse this and then flush out the nozzles as well so rinse it once flush out the nozzles drain it out the bottom rinse it again flush out the nozzles drain it out the bottom rinse it again drain it out of the bottom and flush the nozzles as well that's the best way to do it um, and yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm actually really impressed with that little unit. Now, I will say, there was a bit of spray drift, and we've got basically no wind today. So, ideally, I probably should get like a broom or something and attach it to it and hang it over the back. Um, I know there's a lot of things you can buy online to help stop with spray drift, or I could change the nozzles on it to be a bit more direct and a little bit coarser so that it's not going to drift quite as much. So that could be another option as well. But that's, that's probably one thing I would note about this sprayer. Um, Honestly, that looked really well done. I'm quite impressed with that. Great little unit, um, good little pump on it. And yeah, that's about all I can say. But thanks King Chrome for sending me that to give it a bit of a try. You see it was a lot. Pretty impressed. All right, so quickly, just before we go check out the Renault just over there, the Kai QU, I just want to show you guys this thing in the Lawn Journal app and how we can use growing degree days to help us figure out when to reapply our plant growth regulator again. So it all goes off um, your highest and your lowest temperature and then you get the average of that or the mean of that and it has those have to equal up to about 200 degrees um, There about so what the goal is is for us to apply down the plant growth regulator Before it runs out because it actually goes into what they call a rebound stage and it'll actually have a surge of growth If you don't reapply it before that surge of growth hits, but as I said it will break down quicker when there's more Sun That's just the way it works the hotter it is the shorter amount of time that this product will last. Now, I went really in depth on how plant growth regulators work on a video from probably about two years ago. So check that video out. I'll make sure I'll link it down in the description below. But let's just check out how to add plant growth regulators. So we'll do add entry. We're gonna go to PGR, which is Primo. Product name, Primo Max down the bottom there. Put down 600 mil. Let's make sure it's mil there. Um, that was the day we put it out. No photo for it. But I could take a photo of the area. Let's take a photo. Bam. <laughs> so then we'll go up the top there, it says weather needed. So what you can do 
is we'll add in today's weather, 18, and the low is seven degrees. So we're still not super warm here, as you can see. Cool, done. All right, so that's that there. So as you can see, it came up with the GDD, and it's got a 12 there. So what's gonna happen is, if you add every single day, and so say if we add it in tomorrow, for example, and tomorrow the predicted temperatures are um, 18, and the low is three. Ooh, it's a cold night. Three, and then 18 again. So now you can see our growing degree days have added up to 23. So once that gets to, I'm pretty sure um, it's been set to 200, but it will tell you when you need to reapply anyway, once you start adding these entries every day. So let's just save that. And so if I wanted to go and edit that again and add more days to it, what you would do, journal entries, let's click on the, today was Primo, we'll go to the PGR status, and then you can just add another day there as well. So say if we go to the 21st, going to be Thursday we've got 19 and 5 19 and 5 hopefully that makes sense to you guys so that now is up to 35 for those three days so that's how far it's gone up towards the 200 or 250 growing degree days I hope that makes sense I do have another video that explains a lot more in depth um, but I'll try not to focus on that too much there because you guys get lost because um, it is yeah you need a really long video to explain how it works so check my previous video on it but anyway Let's check the clock. So check this out. Whoa. This has grown a crazy, crazy amount. So much leaf popping through now. Um, we've had really good temps, like we've had a little bit warmer temps. Um, I have not been watering it because there's so much moisture still in the soil. That's not drying out. I can, I've can. i been keeping an eye on it, putting a screwdriver every now and then, just seeing how much moisture is actually in here. Um, and I'll tell you what, it is just growing through like especially this section just here like absolutely crazy so this section just here gets a lot more sun in the morning so it is actually growing just that little bit quicker because it has got that extra sun that area there doesn't get sun until a little bit later in the day because of all these trees just here it sort of blocks it off just a little bit um but mate this is going absolutely bananas it looks so good seriously this lawn's going to be cuttable in like probably another three weeks i reckon so it's nearly been two weeks since we've done this reno. So today's Tuesday, so in two more days, it'll be two weeks since we've done this renovation on this lawn. And I'll tell you what, super impressed with how it's going. Now, the only thing I've been doing from here on in is just, I've been top dressing any wash spots because we did get some more rain. So I top dress more after the last video. Um, and if I can see any spots that look a little bit lower, like I walk over it every now and then, I just put some more sand on top because you might as well do it while it's growing back in. Um, and then from there, I haven't watered, but I probably will water probably tomorrow morning or tonight this afternoon if it's looking a little bit dry I'll just keep my eye on it and see how it's going let's wrap it up there hopefully you guys learned something new from that um, I'm excited to see how much it suppresses the growth in this area it's gonna be awesome I'm probably gonna do the backyard soon and then I'll start doing it on the front yard as well especially once we start getting it down lower and lower as I've told you guys I'm gonna try to squeeze that lawn like super low with the real mar we'll see how we go um, yeah it'll be really really handy using Good old plant growth regulator. Now the guys have um, come in yesterday. Um, we're basically going to be having the bore installed. Probably could be the end of this week. Like seriously, they said if everything frees up well, they'll be here by the end of this week. So you guys will see a video very soon of us sinking a bore here and see how the process works. And let's just hope we're going to get some good water. I think I think we will. Let's see how we go. Um, but yeah, thanks guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.